this is accordion box folds up flat to be oh let's see my example is about a half inch thick um, once folded up and I thought oh we could do that well there are instructions online and I posted in the notes for the webinar the link where you can see this little video that shows how they use a single 12 by 12 sheet of paper to create each one of these five sections of this box just by folding and then you just hook them together. Well I did that with some of my heavy um, paper that I like to use and it was just way too bulky. You'd need to use a pretty uh, either medium or lightweight cardstock or even uh, text weight 12 by 12 paper to do this without having all the bulkiness but I thought it would be a good challenge just to see if I could make a cutting file that would also work so I played with this today and uh, found that I could do it it did work and it turned out much less bulky and instead of using five sheets of paper I used four. <laughs> I've got um, it takes five of these designs and then they're hooked together by this this flap here on this side is tucked in to this box section that's turned upside down and the flap that's on the bottom of this one is tucked into the side of this so these are all tucked with no gluing now my version does does require a little bit of gluing but I'll show you how I made it uh, this was the first page and you can cut five at a time not all at once but the pieces that I use that's the second page the third page was here and the fourth page here now you notice on the the design here that they just took a pen and doodled on the triangular pieces I was thinking that uh, if you like to doodle or you could find a triangular shaped pen art you could actually have your machine do that doodling so I'll show you how I I made this file and uh, maybe you'd like to make it and find a doodle file I found a little uh, kaleidoscope type design that I think I might try or I might even fill this we're talking about engraving fill I might try a, an island fill with this on a nested duplicate with a very narrow thing so I could draw it with pens I think I would have to do a O2 minus O2 and that's way too many maybe only two or three could create a, that design with pens on my little triangular shapes you could do that a few times to get a drawn design so that's a challenge for you uh, it's not really part of the box but this little shape whatever shape it is you draw can be added to these triangular folds in the design just like they did on the original by hand that's uh, would be a fun thing to try so I'll show you how I created my design I started with let's start with a blank page and I, f I found out after trying to assemble these that this shape that tucks in needs to be slightly narrower than the outer shape now this uh, part of the design creates the basic interlocking piece so we'll start with that what we want is a square so I'll just click basic shapes and type SQ to the square double click and I'm going to create one section and then I'll duplicate that 
what I want to do is is make this square uh, four inches wide and 12 inches tall. So I need to put the green lock icon on. But four inches is just a little bit close. So I'm going to make it 3.9, just a little smaller, because this, this uh, ends of these are going to be tucked inside the other shape. I'm going to go ahead and change my mat to green so we can see through these. And to get these perfectly aligned, I can make X be 0, tab over, and Y to be 0, and enter, so that now I know that I can fit a couple more of these. Before I duplicate, I want to add a new layer for my score lines. So I'm going to click on the larger of the two green plus icons on the lower right corner of the screen to give me a new layer. Now that I have a new layer, I'm going to click on this figure 8 icon in the upper left corner to open my node editing. I'm going to grab my pen tool and I'm going to put snapping on an inch to make it really easy. I'm going to make a score line at two inches. This will form the flap. And I'm going to make a score line at six inches, which is where the bottom fold is. And then another one two inches from the bottom. And my score lines do go over a little bit because I shrunk my design. I can change that if I turn the snapping off. If you ever are working with a design and you can't make the lines go where they're supposed to go, check and make sure that you don't have snapping on. This is the node editing tool, which is the second tool here. I'm just moving, just left clicking and just dragging it over just a hair. But I think one of the defaults in the software is um, to have snapping on at 1 32nd of an inch. So if you're trying to move something around and it doesn't go where you want, make sure you don't have snapping on. Okay, so now I have I have three score lines there. I can change those to be dashes or leave them solid, whichever I want. Now I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to go to Edit, Duplicate, and this time I'll use a regular duplicate. I want one row and three columns with no space in between. And apply. So now I have the base of my cards. These will be folded and these are the outer flaps that tuck. Then um, I'm going to actually need five of these so I could select two of them and do a control C copy or go to edit copy and I can open a new page and do control shift V it gives me two more and I can put a, I could put other pieces on this page now we're going to go to the next section the next section is going to be what I call the front and back shapes of this design. And let me go back to the original design here. So you can't see it too well, but uh, all of these being one piece don't need any glue. I'm going to I'm going to make it so that it's less bulky and it'll require a little bit of glue. So I'm going to click on basic shapes again and I'm going to get a square, but I'm also, while I'm there, I'm going to get a triangle. That's what I need for this next part. Now this, this is the outer piece and I need it to be uh, four inches square. So I'll just type four with the gold lock icon on and press enter. I'm going to put it in the middle so I can use my grid lines. And what I want to do is cut a chunk out of here. And the chunk that I need to cut out is 
a triangle uh, that is two and a half inches. No, it's four inches wide by two and a half inches tall. I had to write that down because I can't remember too well. Four inches wide and two and a half inches tall. And try that again because it's not four inches. Oh, two and a half inches wide and four inches tall. And press enter. There we go. That doesn't look right either. So let's um, come back here. This is the part that I need here. It's four inches wide and two and a half inches tall. I had it right the first time. Four inches wide, two and a half inches wide. Tall. Oh. Okay, now I want to line these up to the bottom. So I'm going to select them both and type B. That puts it in the bottom and they're perfectly aligned. And what I want to do is remove that triangle from the box. To do that, I select them both, and I go down to Boolean join, which is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight icons from the right. When I click that, I can try, and this is what I want. So it's a B minus A difference and apply. Now, how did I get that? Well, first I folded up the paper to see what it was supposed to look like. And then I did some welding. But this is the shape that I needed. And I figured out, oh, this is easier to make. Just uh, subtracting a triangle from a square than trying to make an overlapping triangle. There's two overlapping triangles originally and then welding it could be done that way. So we're going to need five of these so we can uh, duplicate that, edit, duplicate, and I, I have two rows with three in each row and apply and then I get rid of one. So this is um, what I'm going to call the, the back of the of the card, of the box. And now I'm going to use one of these. Let's uh, come back to this page. Need to remove this page. To remove a page, right click and um, delete. So I delete that page. So we've, we've got these shapes here and we've got these shapes. Now I'm working on this shape. You notice the shape that I just made. It has this in the middle and then it has a, a triangle on each side. So that's what we're going to make next. So we're going to borrow one of these. I'm just going to click it and type Control C copy. Get a new page and Control Shift V. And then I'm going to be adding a triangle to either side of this. So I'm going to go up here to, to again, triangle and grab a triangle here. And this triangle needs to be two and a half inches wide. And I got these measurements just after I folded up the 12 by 12 paper. Then I opened it up and measured my, my little pieces. So this was 3.75 inches high. So what I, I um, did before rotating this is it has to have a fold line down the middle. So I line this up with the grid line and maybe zoom in on it. And I'm going to add a new layer, clicking on the larger of the two green plus icons, left click on the pen tool, left click, 
the top of the triangle, then right click at the bottom of the triangle and that gives me my fold line in the middle. Now what I want to do is rotate this. I'll hold the control and drag this, but it doesn't give me exactly what I need, so I'm just going to drag it until it's the same angle as that square. And uh, to get those rotate handles, you click on a shape. It toggles between resizing, rotating, and distorting. So I'm going to go to the curved arrows here until I get these lined up just the way I want them. And Julie, now, yes. You deselected your um, score lines when you were demonstrating them. Let's see if that works now. Yeah, we do want to rotate the score lines with the shape because if we don't, we will end up with score lines that are out of position. And I want these to slightly overlap so that I can weld them together. Once I have one the way I want it, I can select it. And, and I see that it's just a little bit shorter. I can bring it down just a hair. And then uh, Control, Shift, and Click gives me another, and I'll flip it, mirror it, left bottom um, icon, second from the left. And then I'm going to use my Control arrow down and left arrow to move this across to the other side until it's just barely overlapping. And now doesn't look right. <laughs> it doesn't look right. I got to go back here. Okay, the wide part of the design is on the opposite end. So we have the this triangle cut out here. The wide part is at the top. So I got to make sure that I get it right. So I need to flip it. Flip it. That's the third icon from the left on the bottom. So now I've got the design the way I want it to be. I'm going to, um, I think I will select these score lines. Well, they're already on their own layer, so I'm just hide those. Select all of these and weld and see if they weld. Got a little bit of a problem here, so I'll do Control-Z, undo, click on this, and maybe left arrow once or twice, and now weld. And then I'll show those score lines. So I need to have a score line here and a score line here. Those are straight lines. So I think I will put snapping on and just draw those score lines in. Left click here and right click here. Left click and right click. So these are score lines now and I can um, this this is one side. This would be um, the full well, the front, but I need to have some tabs on it so that I can connect it. So let's look again at my original design here. Show you where I am. This is the back, but this is the front. So we've we've added the little pleated sides here, and now we want to get some tabs, some glue tabs so that this back piece 
can glue to the front. And this is going to form a sleeve that slides over the front. So um, the sleeve includes this side piece. Hope I'm not losing you here. So we have our score lines and now I want to zoom in a little bit so I can draw the tabs and I don't want really the snapping on. Maybe I could do snapping it maybe a fourth of an inch. I'm going to left click on my Bezier draw and left click right on the corner and oh, see it won't let me put it there so that's where the snapping gets in the way so I'm going to not use snapping. Left click on the corner bring it down about a half inch and I'm just judging from the grid lines here left click and then bring it all the way down to the the bottom line left click and left click and then I'll join it up here with a right click if it doesn't join I'll, I'll just left click and join when you have a line bend left click right click and convert to line if it bends out of shape now this isn't quite overlapping the way it should be you can always use node editing and move the endpoint over a little bit and I bent the line again so left click right click and convert to line if it's not quite close enough again you can just move it a little bit so it's overlapping and now I have a, a nice overlapping line before I weld that I want to copy it though I'll left click to select control shift and click to get another then mirror it and hold control and my right arrow to move this over to the right side of the design I'm going to hide all my score lines but I drew my tabs on the score line layer so I'm going to select just this one hold shift and this one and send them to their own layer by clicking on the smaller of the two green plus icons and that sends them to the top layer so now I can hide these score lines select all and weld that looks good show my score lines here and I need to add another little score line I see I have a little hump here I can remove that hump before I add my score lines I'm going to left click at the end of that segment right click and delete node now I'm going to left click right click and convert to line so I've, I've gotten rid of that little hump there left click left click on the end right click delete node, left click, right click and convert to line so it's nice and smooth. Now I'm just going to draw a line I'm going to select my score lines layer click on this corner up at the top where my tab should be and bring it right down here left right click to end the line and I'm going to do the same click then left right click to end the line so now I can make all these dash lines if I want dash lines click on line style create new line style adjust the spacing if you want and okay so now I have my score lines all ready for this piece I originally made these a very narrow tabs but it was really hard to glue because the only place we're going to glue on this whole design is right on these tabs so I'm going to glue this tab to this piece and the other tab will go to the other side so it'll make a ring and this ring will slide around it'll slide up on this once I have that 
ring, let me um, do a contrast here and change that color and move the score lines up and zoom in a little bit. On this fold line is going to be a valley fold. This will be a mountain and a mountain. And this valley fold is what you see on the picture right here. This is that valley fold. When you slide this piece, you fold it in half, and you slide this piece folded in half up between the little sleeve and you in, then you um, fold the top over. I included the link for the video so you can kind of look at it to see how these are all connected but that's really all the pieces there are. So we have the, the basic inside, then we have this piece that is connected to this piece, which we, we need to duplicate five times or make. Julie? Eight. Yes. Before you duplicate, go to the bottom of your um, tabs, and if you make them near the same angle as the, the first half of that V, it'll be easier to glue and fold. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. And the reason that I didn't notice that is because I made mine originally very narrow here. Yes. But um, but it was very hard to glue. When you're gluing, you need to kind of keep it. Um, take it. Take it up to about an inch higher. On, on just the bottom. That one bottom node. No, the same angle as you are. Yep, about an inch. Because if you look, if you look at that V, you, the first V, if you see that it's about a half an inch, then you know that it's going to fit in that triangle. Yes. And it did fit really well when I cut it, but it was just too narrow. All right, convert to line. Yep, and just, just take nodes. that. No, not that node. The other node. The bottom one. And then convert that to a line. Beautiful. So now that will fit in that first half of your fold. Yeah. That is very true. So I have to do the same thing. So I'll talk through it, what Susan just talked me through. I'm going to left click, right click, and delete a node. I'm going to left click, right click, delete a node, and get these nodes deleted at the bottom. Then left click, right click, convert to line. Now I can move this bottom thing up here about an inch, keeping the angle the same. Is that is that about right there? It's a little different. Does it? No. In, instead, yeah, like that. So it's out, still out of half an inch, yes. Because I do want this tab to be sufficient enough to hold the sleeve together. The front of the sleeve is this section here. This is, these are the two side creases of the, of the sleeve, and then the back piece is shaped just like the front but the back glues to these different edges here. And you want to make sure that that's totally dry before you try slipping it over the, um, the main part of the card, these that we have on the first page here. And because these are folded in half, and it's a little puzzle to get um, that inside and then flip these, slip the folded tabs up here, these into the piece next to it. So one of the five little boxes is, is upside down here. So this one's right side up, this one's upside down, right side up, upside down, right side up. So these are interlocked at top and bottom. 
I thought it would be nice also, once I got it done, mine's all one color, it would be nice to make these in different colors to give um, some variety. You might also make a 2 inch by a 4 inch piece of um, decorative paper here to make that piece more interesting. And a 4 by 4 piece would cover the whole side of this end for um, if you wanted a layered piece to go on either end just for decoration, maybe a contrasting color. But this is a, really a fun little thing. You can fill it with all kinds of stuff. And be sure to look at the link to see the video. It's in Spanish, but you don't really need to hear what she's saying. You can, um, this particular link just shows her putting it together.